Hey everybody, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. And you're watching Tesla Time News. Episode 229. On Now You Know. We are brought to you as always by our amazing Patreon patrons. If you want to help support this show, you can head over to patreon.com slash now you know, and you'll find some really great perks, including the Investor Club. And we're sponsored by BigBattery.com with the best battery prices in the USA, guaranteed. If you've got something you need to power from homes to cars, RVs to boats, and much more, BigBattery.com has you covered, offering the newest battery tech. Use the code now you know to save 5% off your purchase today at BigBattery.com. So this episode is sponsored by Omaze. Omaze has some incredible prizes. Check out this Florida dream house. Yeah, you could win this home with the resort style yard with a pool and hot tub, a chef's kitchen, a living room with a 22 foot fireplace and a wine nook. And look at this bathroom. But what if I don't want to move to Florida? That's OK. You could also choose the cash prize instead. What's the cash prize? One million dollars. Sweet. And by entering for a chance to win the dream house or the million dollars, you are automatically entered for a chance to win over 3,000 additional prizes, including a Tesla Model 3. What I really like is that every donation supports Omaze's partner charity, Children's Miracle Network Hospitals. Children's Miracle Network Hospitals will use funds received from this giveaway to help build out and enhance a state-of-the-art epilepsy monitoring unit at Orlando Health Arnold Palmer Hospital for Children. Yeah, the epilepsy monitoring unit will be equipped with the most advanced technology available. The new unit will include space for a parent to stay with their child through the process, keeping kids comfortable and caregivers plugged in. So to potentially win either the Florida Dream House or a million dollars or 3,000 additional prizes and support Children's Miracle Network Hospitals, go to home.omaze.com NYK. The link is down in the show notes below. And we're brought to you by EcoWear.us. There you can find the shirts that we're wearing, including dozens and dozens of other designs. And you don't have to just get t-shirts. There are sweatshirts, backpacks, pillows, towels, all sorts of different Cell designs. phone cases. Yeah, and you can find all of those things there. And everything that you buy is going to be 100% carbon offset from the manufacturing, the shipping, and the life cycle of everything that you purchase on there. And on top of that, we plant a tree for every order, and we help cap a well for every order. So it is extremely carbon negative. So a Tesla saved two Chevys. What? Tesla saved GM? Uh, well, no. Uh, one of our viewers, Joel, shared us this footage of his Tesla Model Y, which caught these would-be thieves on camera with sentry mode. They were trying to steal these two Chevys. Luckily, sentry mode flashes the car lights when it gets triggered, and it scared off the would-be thieves. So Tesla's willing to put itself in the line of harm to save ICE cars is what you're saying. Well, no, I mean, they were peeking in the Model Y as well. I think that we don't, you know, typically think about how thieves, you know, live their lives. But I've got to imagine that after a couple times that this happens to you when you're snooping around cars doing your thief stuff, you, you realize that you're going to be recorded on one of these cars. You're going to stay very far away from any Tesla because when they flash their lights and say you are being recorded, I think you're going to go, OK, I don't want to have anything to do with that. And if you could help us out because the YouTube algorithm really really likes it when the like button is hit early in a video. I don't know why, but that's just how it is. We hope you're enjoying the show so far. Our whole team puts hours and hours of work into the show every week, and we'd really appreciate it if you click the like button right now. Welcome to Giga Texas. How can I help you? Uh, yeah, I guess I'll have the uh, press and the fries. Uh, would you like to giga size that? Oh, oh yeah, I'll have the giga press. Our buddies Jeff Roberts and Joe Tegmeyer spotted these being delivered to Giga Texas in Austin last week. Yeah, those two big crates you see there from Idra, that's a company in Italy, and those are Giga Presses inside, or at least the beginnings of them. I think uh, Tesla still has to do some stuff to it to make it a Giga Press. Mm. These are being set up in the Northeast Casting area, and I really want to give a huge shout out to the Quad Squad for spotting that and uh, bringing it to all of our attention. Yeah, I had no idea that this was actually going to happen. I sort of thought that they were only going to make cyber trucks and maybe semi trucks at the Gigafactory Austin. But with the Giga Presses, uh, maybe they're making some other either parts for one of those trucks or they're also making Model Ys, maybe Model 3s. Yeah, we're going to have to get Jeff to like fly down into the building soon and uh, really scope it out. Fly it right through <laughs> the Giga Press. Yes. <laughs> So it looks like Tesla needs some battery engineers and employees as it ramps up production of 4680s and starts building out facilities in Germany and Austin. Tesla has posted for new battery jobs on its website, has a special site for it. We'll put the link in the show notes. 
So what you're seeing here is the new video out from Tesla called Making Batteries, which shows their new battery making process for the 4680s. Now, some scenes may seem familiar from Battery Day, but I urge you to watch it at slow speeds and really drink in the enormity of the process. Yeah, so is this going on at Tesla's Cato Road facility next to Fremont, or is this at like Giga Nevada? Well, I think the the making of the batteries seems like it could definitely take place at Cato Road because it's not an enormous building. But then the charging section looks really massive, and I don't know if it would fit at Cato Road. I think it might. But yeah, it looks multi-story, doesn't it? Yeah. And I mean, Cato Road is multi-story, but I didn't think that they were going to take up multiple stories with one thing. Yeah. So then Elon tweeted out, battery cell production is the fundamental rate limiter, slowing down a sustainable energy future. Very important problem. And Owen Spark said, genius idea to take methods from the bottling industry. Elon responded, he said, the best manufacturing technology is in ultra high volume industries like food and beverage, some medical, example, e.g. syringes, and toys. So funny because when you think of like the best manufacturing in the world, you're not thinking of like bottling <laughs> or... <laughs> we make toys here. You're thinking of like, you know, Boeing and... And Rockets cell phones and, and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Then Ben Kelly said, within the battery cell production process, what are the key sub bottlenecks? Asking for a friend. Elon said the rate limiting part or process in cell production is constantly changing. So I just want to ask about that. So that means that basically once you solve kind of one problem... Then another one crops up that limits you. You just have to keep like whack-a-mole. Yeah, it's funny. It's similar to the like the Model 3 bottlenecks that we were hearing about during the Model 3 ramp, where you know one thing can limit the process entirely, even if everything else could go really fast. If it's like, well, Joe's really slow at tightening all these bolts, it's like, well, then that's what is going to be slowing down the entire process. Yeah. And speaking of 4680s, Electrek reported last week that they had obtained a photo of a Tesla 4680 structural battery pack without the cells. So what we're seeing here is a bit different from what Sandy Monroe conjectured about. There is space between the cells for coolant. It's hard to see here, but those appear to be the coolant lines around the outside of the pack. And now I'm kind of surprised because uh, Sandy Monroe on a recent video showed a, you know, a pack with fake, you know, wooden batteries to mm -hmm. show you what he thought it would look like. You can see it here. Um, he did conjecture that it would be 24 by 40. I counted this pack as much as I could. It looks like it's 23 by at least 40. So Sandy got it almost exactly right on the head. But Sandy's pack shows the cells really tightly packed together, which he then explained was going to be cooled from the top and the bottom. And it appears here that maybe that's not the case, that maybe they're going to be also cooled from in between like they currently are. Now, the big thing to point out here is that there aren't any like modules. There's no space taken up by anything other than the batteries, the exception of the maybe coolant lines or at the very least glue or some kind of battery holder gooey stuff that goes in between right. all the batteries. Overall, though, the energy density of this pack is going to be a lot higher just because the radius of the cells are larger. And it's really hard to see, like it's really hard to picture that our human minds aren't really well versed in circular packing dynamics but essentially this is going to be a much higher energy density pack which would be perfect for Cybertruck. Now you might be asking why didn't Tesla just do this from the beginning from day one back in you know 2006 or something why didn't they just start doing this kind of 4680 and it's because there weren't any of these they are actually making the cell they wanted to take just like off the shelf solutions that were ubiquitous and stick them in the car. Now that they're going to a more energy dense design, they have to make it themselves. And I mean, these 18650s were literally just batteries that they put in laptops. Yep. But as Tesla was able to uh, accumulate a little bit more capital, put more resources into battery research and technology, they were able to make whatever size cell they wanted, but they went with a very similar form factor, which I think was really smart because it allowed them to iterate much faster. Yeah. So would you like a job where you can sit on your couch all day and get paid, hang out, look at your phone and be on social media all day. Sound good? Then have I got a job for you. All right. What kind of job are we talking about? I'm talking about the Energy Customer Support Specialist Remote that is listed on Tesla's website. Basically, you get to read Twitter and forward customer service complaints worthy of Elon to, well, Elon. Isn't this what Elon uses Twitter for anyway? Yeah, but I think it's getting a little too hard for him to keep up. I mean, imagine all the people every day that are saying, at Elon Musk. Mm. This is a problem I'm having with my car. Mm. He can't possibly keep up. And to be fair, he probably shouldn't keep up because I'm I'm 
assuming a lot of those tweets are not worthy of his response. So or at you least need redundant. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So um, it looks like Tesla is looking for someone to actually kind of sort through all of Twitter and keep track of all this stuff. They had worded it, quote, the role of a specialist is to resolve or escalate complaints through appropriate channels and address social media escalations directed at the CEO with critical thinking. Now, that wording has been removed since a couple news media pieces have covered the story. So I'm guessing Tesla no longer wants to point out the fact that you would be actually working directly under Elon. Well, it was because these news stories were extraordinarily negative. They were like, they're making a position in Tesla to protect Elon Musk from mean people on Twitter. And it's like, well, it's not really even if you read the job description, that's not what they're saying. I mean, complaints are sent to Elon, unlike pretty much any other car company. That's just the way that the cookie crumbles in this case. I would like the job, actually. Uh -huh. I think I'd be really good at it. I'd like to help Tesla with their customer service. I would institute something like more Tesla.com if I got the job. Yes. Because I think that we need a way for people to uh, upvote and downvote things that they want to get to Elon's eyeballs. And this thing actually exists. It's called more Tesla.com. Yeah, I urge you guys, if you have features that you'd like to see in Tesla, go to more Tesla.com. You might probably already find what you want there and you can just upvote it or if it's not there you can add it yourself and elon if you're watching uh head over there and just you know take the top stuff it's prioritized for you yeah i mean it might take care of this whole problem actually i might have just got myself out of a job it's it's not well well don't worry because whoever does get the job because it's not going to be you because you didn't <laughs> apply uh will be able to use more tesla to address complaints in a more logical order. And if everyone goes over there, puts their stuff in there, we can have a nice prioritized list, get through it all. Boom, perfect cars. Nice. See, VP is a special operations. That's the job we need. So white hat hacker, Green the Only, tweeted, just check Tesla's EPC and saw it's got a redesign. I was randomly browsing it and I don't think Model 3 had a trailer hitch in the US. Did it? No, they didn't. He found that I guess they're gonna be getting it soon. Okay. And we're also hearing from people that new Model 3s, the 2021 model, so to speak, have a removable panel in the back where the tow hitch would go. So just like the Model Y, basically. Yeah. And so it looks like it's coming. Yay! <laughs> I mean, this makes a lot of sense, but why didn't they just implement this when they first came out with the car? I mean, I'm guessing it's because they were so busy trying to get the production to scale at all that they just had to chop off the list anything that would slow them down. Well, it's good that they're coming out with it now. I mean, if you really needed the tow hitch, you can trade in your car, didn't lose that much value. And speaking of the Model 3, it appears that Tesla has slashed the price of the Model 3 in Europe. In Germany, we're seeing the price of the Model 3 standard range no, plus. No, 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 no. The Model 3, period. None of the standard range plus garbage. Oh, right, the tweet from last week. Yeah, yeah. I just call it the Model 3. Okay. The okay. The Model 3 has gone from 42,990 euros to 39,990 euros. The Model 3 long range all wheel drive from 52,490 to 49,990. And the Model 3 performance has gone from 58,490 to 54,990. So big price cuts in the EU, similar pricing in France and with some government incentives in France like the gas car trade-in, you can get a new Model 3 in France now for less than 30,000 euros. That's awesome. And well, 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 turns out you can fit in the third row of a Model Y. Oh, you can? Yes. I guess I uh, got to eat some crow on that one. The yes. Mia culpa. I thought it was just for like little kids, but it turns out, yeah, our good friend Ricky from 2-Bit Da Vinci checked out a seven-seater Model Y, and he is six feet tall, by the way, and he just fits in the third row. It's uh, pretty amazing because uh, he's six feet tall, which is above average height. The average height for men in the United States is five foot nine. That's me. Uh, so you're average, uh, which means that half of all men are going to be taller and half of all men are going to be shorter. And the average height of a female in the United States is 5'4". And that means that most Americans fit, at least height wise, in the Model Y. And he actually had enough leg room to sit. I mean, the headroom was the only problem he had. Basically, his head did touch the glass. But um, I don't think you're generally going to stick a six foot person in the third row of a car. I mean, if you have seven people that you need to move, unless it's a basketball team, there's going to be an arrangement of, of people sizes and you're going to make the short people sit in the back. That's right. just most people 
They know their place in the car. <laughs> Big shout out to Ricky from 2-Bit Da Vinci. Go check out his video on his channel. Awesome video showing you everything about the third row in the Model Y. And speaking of the Model Y, Tesla has confirmed on its Weibo account that as we reported last week, Tesla started selling the Made in China Model Y in 10 Chinese cities. And Model 3 was the best-selling EV in China in 2020 with almost 140,000 sales and they took 11% of the EV market share. So, take a look at this list here. Yeah, take that, Huling, Huguang Mini EV. That's the one that's like $5,500 yeah. and uh, doesn't look like it should be in the same class. It's not in the same class. No. It's it's just it's electric. an EV. It's just electric, yeah. No, that is incredible. I mean, again, Tesla goes into the biggest market in the world and crushes it. And going up against extremely affordably priced uh, competition. Yeah. And speaking of affordable, let's talk about the new Porsche Taycan. Affordable? Yes, almost anyone can afford this new Taycan uh, because they have just announced a cheaper price for the base model of the Porsche Taycan. So last year, the 4S started at $103,000, which I, I think everyone would agree is a little bit more expensive than most people could afford. But now, just Taycan is starting at a very affordable $79,900. $79, That's not affordable. Well, but with the federal and state tax incentives, that could get it to below $70,000. Okay, for a luxury car, maybe I'll, I'll give it to you. <laughs> okay, so it's not affordable to the majority of, of people. Um, let's just take a look at its specs because okay. they've basically removed the front drive train. Mm -hmm. uh, so now it is a rear wheel drive Porsche. It has a 79 kilowatt hour battery. It has way less torque. The, the 4S had 472 foot pounds of torque. This one has 250 foot pounds of torque. Ooh, almost half. Yeah. It can do zero to 60 in 5.4 seconds. Hang on, hang on, I'm sorry. Can't a Model 3 do about the same time? Yeah, my Model 3 could give it a run for its money. You have a rear wheel drive Model 3. Yeah. And it can give a Porsche a run for its money? Yeah, and I mean, if you have a long range Model 3, you're gonna leave it in the dust. All right, so who is this aimed at? Well, judging by their marketing, they're going after the Asian market. Yeah, let's keep in mind that China is Porsche's single largest market. And so it makes sense that they would go after it, basically put out their really good stat car the first year and then lower the price, drop the stats and go after, you know, a less discerning market. Now, I would argue that this is a fairly similar strategy to Tesla. I mean, the Model 3 ranges in price pretty wildly from the performance down to the Model 3. The specs also vary, and so does the drivetrain from all-wheel drive down to rear-wheel drive. I just don't like how Porsche, when they talk about their specs, they'll give you the specs for the bigger battery option. So for $5,600 more, you can get the bigger battery, which gives you a better zero to 60 time, and that's all they talk about. Um, it's only when you read the fine print do you see that if you want to get the lowest priced car, you're going to get a lot worse specs. Tesla Time News is sponsored by Cybertruck Owners Club. There you'll find a crowdsourced reservation tracker that you can update and find your place in line. Check out their website for Cybertruck news, discussions, and community for Cybertruck enthusiasts and future owners. And a 3D configurator allowing you to visualize the Cybertruck in any color, wrap, and logo, both on screen and in augmented reality. All right, so Mercedes-Benz just announced the EQA. Didn't we already report on that? Uh, no, this is the new model. Maybe you're thinking of the Mercedes EQC. No, it wasn't the EQC. Oh, maybe you're thinking of the EQS. I don't know. I can't keep all these Mercedes-Benz models straight. Well, it's very simple. It's it's just like the alphabet, except that you you actually it's even simpler than the alphabet because you remove a bunch of the the letters. It says A C S. That is it. Now you know the electric Mercedes-Benz is. That doesn't help at all. Okay, so the EQA. So when Mercedes-Benz first announced the EQA, they said that it would have over 300 miles of range. That's pretty good. Turns out they were talking about 300 miles of NEDC range, which is the... Oh, not even darn close. The Chinese equivalent, which doesn't stand for not even darn close, but, <laughs> but it should. It should. <laughs> now they're claiming that the EQA is going to have a range of 265 miles. Mm on the WLTP range. What does that stand for again? That stands for, well, less than probably. No, it's the, uh, the, the European standard, which is pretty rosy as well. So it's gonna have 265 miles of WLTP range. That's like under 250 miles of range. Uh, almost certainly. And it has a 66.5 kilowatt hour battery. But let's talk about some of the other specs. It has 140 kilowatts uh, front wheel drive, zero to 60 in 
8.9 seconds. Yikes. Which, you know, is fine, you know, but it's a Mercedes. Yeah. Don't you want power? Little, little it's pep? A, it's a Mercedes. You want to get on the on-ramp with a little pep? Uh, it has 11 kilowatts of onboard level two charging or DC fast charging up to 100 kilowatts. That's not a lot. It's doable, but like you would rather have 150 or more kilowatts. I feel like a lot of new EV drivers uh, would be like, oh, 100 kilowatts sounds like a big number. Right. But it's just not a lot. Yeah, especially when you first pull in and you plug in. It's really nice to get that like 150 kilowatts of, of charging speed because you're going 50 percent faster than 100 kilowatts. All right. When's it coming out? It's going to be released in Germany later this year with a starting price of 47,540 euros or about $46,000. Now, let's just talk about the looks for a second. It mm -hmm. already looks kind of dated to me. I mean, I don't like those blue air vents and that nose cone. Doesn't that look like circa 2012? Yeah, well, here's my thought, right? They're coming out with this car. First of all, they don't really want to sell it because they're going to probably be losing money on it. Let's be, let's be honest. Then they know that they're going to need to sell a better version in the future when you know evs are like the only option that you can buy so they have to make sure that it's going to look old in the near future so you think they have like special group of designers that come up with like what's in the zeitgeist right now and it looks good this year but then in a couple of years it's like oh that kind of looks dated yeah i don't think that this is new at all i mean car companies have been doing this forever i mean wh when was the last time you saw like a up-to-date model year car and you were like Ooh, uh, yeah, you're right. You know, you might be like, oh, OK, that looks that looks fresher than the the dead looking designs of, of you know, just five years ago. But then you're like, OK, and then it doesn't age well. Right. And you're like, oh, like, oh, I wish I could go back to some classics or something like that. And I want to talk about the battery here. It actually has a 79 kilowatt hour battery. So it has a 13 kilowatt hour buffer. So that's basically batteries you're never going to use. And they did that, I think, so that the average consumer doesn't have to think about they just plug it in. It's not like a Tesla where you can decide how much you charge to like you could charge to 100 percent here. They're just going to tell you it's charging to 100 percent, but it's not. And that's to protect the battery. And I, and I get that. And all EVs do this. I mean, even in a Tesla, your, you know, 100 percent full Tesla, it has a state of charge of about in the 90 percent right. category because you don't want to go really literally to 100 percent charge. But, yeah, uh, this means that you're going to be charging to 80 percent at full, which has some advantages. Let's be clear, though. OK. Battery degradation is going to, first of all happen less because even if you charge to 100 every day it's not going to hurt the batteries as much and then as battery degradation happens the car could essentially hide the battery degradation to you the customer uh for years oh because it could keep using the buffer because let's say every time you charge up to the full you know 66 and a half uh, kilowatt hours of of energy stored and then you know you use it and you use it and let's say that's 79 kilowatt hours is going down because of the degradation well as long as you're able to get all the power put into your car you're not going to notice until the degradation hits 66 and a half i really want to know about this uh, as the years go by i want to know if that's actually what they're doing if they're smart enough to actually implement that or if they haven't even thought of that well it's smart up until a certain point because then battery degradation is going to accelerate just when you actually start to see it so instead of a slow degradation happening over time you're gonna see oh this app, my car is perfect my car is perfect. oh no so jd power is out with their 2021 us ev experience ownership study and on a thousand point scale it shows surprise surprise Tesla has the highest ownership experience. Most EV owners surveyed said that they will never drive gas again, but many EV owners said that their next EV may not be the same brand. So that's an interesting point. So this survey shows that a lot of people drove EVs, really like them, don't want to go back to gas, but may not have been super happy with the actual brand they had. This shows here that Tesla led the luxury category, followed by e-tron and iPACE. Then in the mass market uh, survey, Kia Nero, followed by Bolt, Leaf, and eGolf. Yeah, maybe next time people are going to be like, like, hmm, I don't really want another Leaf. Right. I mean, and I can attest to that. Like when I switched to my Leaf, I was like, oh, this is great. I'm never going to buy a gas car again. But I had my gripes, you know, having a 70 mile max range was a little limiting, but still freeing in another sense. I never had to go to the gas pump, never had to get an oil change. Uh, and pretty much ne nothing ha bad has happened to my car. I've never had to take it into the shop. I've just driven it to work and home every single day. And I love that. But the same 
kind of could be said for my Model 3. So last Sunday, Pierre Farragou tweeted at Elon. He said, Elon, I paid full self-driving for my Model 3 in November. I now want to upgrade to Model Y. And your team tells me you don't value full self-driving in your trading offer because you can do the software upgrade for free. Want me to pay again full price for full self-driving? That's not fair. Change that. Elon said, looking into this, no question that full self-driving should be viewed as reasonably valuable when doing a trade-in. So I want to point out that if you sell your Tesla right now with full self-driving to a third party, so if I sell my car to you, it retains full self-driving. You will get that. And so I could include that in the price. I could kind of jack up the price because it has it. Um, but if I sell my car to Tesla, because I want to get a new car, let's say, Tesla will basically kind of discount and won't really count the, the full self-driving. And so a lot of people are saying, Hey, what's up with that? Now, Sofian had a good idea here. He said, would be awesome if Tesla offered an option to transfer full self-driving to a new car at times of trade-in. So let's just talk about this for a second because I don't think it's really apparent to a lot of people about this because once you buy your car, you're for a few years not even thinking of selling it. Mm -hmm. I think that Tesla kind of made a bad call at some point and I don't know exactly when it was and I don't know exactly who made the call, but the call was, hey, full self-driving. When they turn it in, we're not, we don't care, right? Because we can just turn on and off full self-driving when we sell it to the next customer. So whenever we're going to get the car, we're going to turn it off and then we're going to sell it to a customer and they're going to have to buy full self-driving. But what about the customer who paid for full self-driving? Their full self-driving disappears off the face of the earth. And then if they wanted to buy a new Tesla, they have to pay another, in this case, $10,000 for full self-driving. Yeah. And so Elon's saying here that he's going to solve the problem. But now I think he's stuck in a new dilemma, which is uh, if Tesla does this, won't there be a lot of angry people who already traded in their cars who are like, wait a minute, you didn't give it to me a month ago. Now, Tesla has dealt with similar things in the past. They basically just send checks to people who complain a lot. Uh, no, just people who they have done this similar you know, thing to. It doesn't get picked up in the news. Uh, we've heard about it because we have a lot of viewers who own Teslas and have had, you know, little policy change things happen. So like when uh, price drops have happened, uh, they generally, you know, a certain period of time, they say, oh, you bought your car right before the switch. Uh, we feel bad. Here's some Here's a check. Right. And uh, people go, oh, OK, I'm no longer angry because why would I be? So I think that that might be the way that they solve this issue. But why did they make this problem in the first place? So, I mean, it seems like there's kind of two ways you could handle this. You could either sell the car with the license and the license stays with the car forever. And then the license dies with the car. But then that means I can sell the car with the license back to Tesla and get its full value. Or... The person owns the license and can transfer the license until maybe they die or it's just now a possession. Little Timmy, I give you my full self-driving license. Yeah, could you, though? I mean, or would it die with you? Well, I mean, think of a PlayStation game. You take the disc, you put it into your PlayStation, it starts playing the game. Oh, and you can sell me that disc. And I can say, here, Zach, have this disc. I can no longer play the game because I sold it to you, but now I have the money and everyone's happy. But now I think we get into a bigger question. What is Tesla's game plan going forward? Hmm. Because full self-driving at $10,000 is expensive. Mm -hmm. And if we think that the robo-taxi network is going to make money, which we do, then yeah, you might say, okay, well, that's valuable. But for people who don't want to pay that, I know that they're going to be starting subscription for full self-driving. My thought is because a lot of people bought early access to full self-driving, basically anyone who's bought, well, you especially, because you bought back in 2016, but basically everyone who's bought full self-driving doesn't have a full self-driving car right now. So that's early access. So what is Tesla going to do? That's why you need a VP of special operations to help figure out this problem. So a little plug here for our Now You Know Investor Club that you can join through our Patreon. Earlier this month, Arkimoto joined the EV lobbying group Zeta, or the Zero Emission Transportation Association. CEO of Arkimoto Mark Fraunmeier said, We stand at a pivotal point in history, and if we are to create a better world for ourselves and future generations, we need to start right now with a rational, cohesive, and visionary strategy. We are stoked to join Zeta and work with our industry peers that are dedicated to building a cleaner, more sustainable world, while at the same time creating thousands of new jobs and dramatically improving the country's infrastructure. Now, you might be asking, what does this have to do with the Now You Know Investor Club? Well, our patron, Alan, told Mark about Zeta in our Investor Club live stream back in November. 
Oh, one last thing. I hope you join Zeta. <laughs> Zeta. Yes. Oh, Zeta. Uh, uh, zero mission. Uh, tr- yeah, zero mission transportation association. Yeah. Oh, all right. Sounds like something we would be into. We need one more partner because we're stockholders. We need one more partner. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Uh, s- send me more info. Yeah, so we had a little chat with Mark hanging out just with us in the club, and uh, one of our members told him to join Zeta, and he did. Right, and he didn't know what Zeta was. Right. And then he did, and now they're a part of Zeta. How cool is that? So if you want to join the Investor Club and check out this next Now You Know Investor Club exclusive story, head on over to Patreon and join. The Investor Club Club story. So a couple weeks ago, NHTSA formally requested that Tesla recall and repair the main computer unit, or MCU, in 158,000 Model S's and Model X's. As we've reported before, many owners of older Tesla Model X's and X's, pre-2018 roughly, have experienced slowness and freeze-up issues with their MCUs. Now, last year, NHTSA launched an investigation, and a few months later, Tesla said the problem was related to an eMMC failure. That is a memory card unit that's on the board, um, and they offered an extended warranty. Official data released by Tesla to NHTSA showed that the failure rate was as high as 30% in certain build months. So NHTSA gave Tesla two weeks to respond. And now Tesla has announced a $1,000 price cut for the MCU upgrade on pre-2018 Model S's and X's from $2,500 to $1,500. Now, to be clear, the MCU upgrade is different than the eMMC or the embedded multimedia card memory fix because the MCU upgrade gives the owner of older cars new features that the older MCUs didn't have, like sentry mode, integrated dash cam, and Tesla theater. So the question is, did Tesla slash the MCU upgrade price because the NHTSA recall request is going to happen? Is this going to be Tesla's response to it? It doesn't seem like NHTSA is going to back down on this issue and be like, oh, well, as long as you issued a thousand dollar discount. I think it's going to make a lot of the problems go away because I think at fifteen hundred dollars, a lot of owners like me that have an older MCU are going to go, well, This not only fixes the slowness problem, but it gives me a lot of features I don't currently have. So, I mean, the question really to me comes down to has Tesla been doing the right thing? This does kind of go back to the earlier story we talked about with um, Tesla's full self-driving. It does seem like they should just do the right thing. And since they knew it was a problem and since it really does affect the quality of the car, like I honestly don't want to give rides in in Sparky anymore because I can't predict how sluggish it's going to be. And you wonder why. Model S and X sales have gone down. I think it's because people who have older Model S's and X's don't want to show off their cars because they know that it's not going to impress people if the touchscreen either completely doesn't work or is really slow and sluggish or doesn't you know, start or there's any kind of issues. Yeah, that's just embarrassing. You don't want to show that you don't want to show off a car that has those problems, just like you wouldn't want to show off a car that, you know, backfired all the time. You wouldn't be like, check out my cool car. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> you don't want to do that. Yeah, it's happened so slowly that I sometimes don't realize that it's happened until like you'll get in the car and be like, dude, why is it taking so long to boot up? Right. And I'll be like, oh, isn't, didn't it always take this long? And they'll be like, no, it didn't always take this long. So, yeah, I think that Tesla should just fix the problem. And keep in mind that these Model S and X owners paid a lot more for their cars. They they were early, early customers for Tesla. And I think that it would be smart for Tesla to reward them for being loyal customers there's, as opposed to le- hanging them out to dry. Yeah, I mean, there's some of the best Tesla fans, you know, like they're right. they're really good at selling cars because they want to show them off. And they were people who were able to afford a Model S or Model X earlier on when the cars were north of $100,000. I think that that is a customer base that you do not want to nickel and dime. You want to say, we messed up, let's fix the problem and let's get you back on the road. And then when they say, oh great, the MCU problem is fixed. Oh, that's, that feels good. I feel better about Tesla now. Hey, now that I'm not worried about this MCU issue, maybe I wouldn't feel so worried about selling it to someone and I could go by myself a new Model X or a new Model S. And right now is the perfect time to do it before they announce whatever refresh they're going to have. Yeah, good point. Well, they say Helen of Troy's face launched a thousand ships. Well, SpaceX's Transporter 1 just launched 143 satellites yesterday. 143 rockets? Uh, No, no, no. One rocket with 143 satellites stuffed in it. Why would they do that? Well, it's part of SpaceX's ride-sharing program. Like 
Uber? Not really. It's more like carpooling. Basically, the price to launch uh, a satellite goes down as you stuff more satellites into one rocket because the rocket basically costs a set cost uh, for launching. Um, and the more you can fit in there, the less it costs per satellite. Mike Safian, the vice president of launch at Planet, which is a satellite company that launched over 40 satellites on that mission, said this is the result of SpaceX dramatically cutting the cost of access to launch. It's significant. They cut the price so much we could not believe what we were looking at. And some more SpaceX news. Uh, SpaceX has acquired two oil rigs. SpaceX is drilling for oil? Uh, no, it appears that they're going to be using it for, you know, SpaceX stuff. Like launching and landing? Uh, possibly. So, I mean, keep in mind that SpaceX has a small naval fleet of autonomous drone ships and fairing catchers, and perhaps it would be easier to catch a super heavy booster on an offshore platform. Or maybe that's where they're planning to launch the fleet of a thousand starships from. Or maybe it's just for testing. I mean, at $3.5 million each, they weren't that expensive. 3.5 million. I mean, oil rigs cost like $650 million. Right. Well, the oil company that they were buying from had gone bankrupt. Wow, this is good because I thought you were going to say that Elon was drilling for oil. Well, Elon is getting into the fossil fuel game. What? what? Apparently, he's looking to get into natural gas down in Texas. What? what? Now, lots of people are upset by this, but I've done some digging and I want to show you what I think happened. Elon was driving out to Boca Chica, their uh, Starship facility. And, you know, his people were going over the costs of the upcoming launch and they're like, OK, so it's going to cost, you know, this much for the methane fuel. Um, and then Elon looks out the window and he's like, what's that? Oh, that's just an unused natural gas well. Anyway, like I was saying, just shipping the methane is going to be really expensive, Elon. Um, OK, I want you to look into that. I, we, we should probably buy that. Uh, we bought it. Yeah, so it turns out SpaceX is less than three miles away from an existing gas well, which produces methane, which goes into the Starship. Now, I too am uncomfortable with Elon Musk, slayer of the oil and gas industry, cracking open an abandoned well or drilling for more fossil fuels. However, at this point, They've got to get the methane from somewhere. Mm. And why pay an oil company for something when you're already practically sitting on it? Good point. Now, I do think that they should make a carbon capture plant to make methane from carbon dioxide in the air. Which might explain this. Elon tweeted last Thursday, am donating $100 million towards a prize for best carbon capture technology. Details next week. Everyday Astronaut says, is a saboteur reactor considered a carbon capture technology? Or maybe a good carbon capture machine can be used for a more efficient and powerful saboteur reactor. Elon said, it's a good path for fully renewable rocket energy, so solves part of the problem. But longer chain hydrocarbons than methane are needed to be solid at room temperature. Then Ross tried to get in on the $100 million by saying, a tree? Nice try, Ross. <laughs> Elon said they are part of the solution, but require lots of fresh water and land. We may need something that's ultra large scale industrial in 10 to 20 years. For now, by far the top priority is accelerating the transition to a sustainable energy economy. So, I mean, a hundred million dollar prize for carbon capture technology. That's pretty exciting. I have to be honest, I'm pretty surprised by this. I mean, uh, obviously the, the best way forward is a fully sustainable future. And here's the difference between Elon and say everyone else who's talking about carbon capture technology. Carbon capture technology arose from the oil and gas industry where they basically were saying, hey, well, you know, since we pulled all of this stuff in the atmosphere anyways, uh, well, uh, we could capture it. And then you guys would stop bugging us because we'd say, look at this beautiful plant producing uh, solid carbon dioxide that you don't have to worry about no more. Whereas Elon is not in the oil industry at all. So this doesn't really benefit him. But this isn't the only money that Elon is donating. Yeah, Elon's Musk Foundation is also donating $5 million to help fight the coronavirus. Elon is donating $5 million to two Boston researchers working on vaccine research. One of the recipients, Dr. Gallet Alter, a professor in medicine, worked with SpaceX and developed a coronavirus antibody test for SpaceX's Crew Dragon launch in May. She said it was so cool to see someone so focused on revolutionizing the world interested in how we fight itty bitty viruses. And we've set up a whole channel full of clips, these bite sized shareable news clips so that if you want to share the story with someone, you don't have to share them the link to this whole hour long broadcast. You can give them the clip of something you're interested in. So head on over to the Now You Know Clips channel and check it out. All right, it's time for Going Green. 
All right. So usually we talk about little, you know, oh, this little town is going to go green. They're going to put in charging spaces or something like that. Um, what are we talking about today? Well, President Joe Biden last week rejoined the Paris Agreement after Trump had announced in 2017 that the U.S. would withdraw from the agreement. The U.S. officially withdrew from the Paris Agreement on November 4th, 2020. It will take another few weeks for the U.S. to officially be part of the agreement again. Now, this is uh, great news uh, because, of course, just by joining the Paris Agreement, we've solved climate problems, right? Well, it's just we, it's it's such a good step in the right direction that we're just stepping over all the issues and this solves it. Well, we have a lot of work to do to keep to the 2015 Paris Agreement goals of staying at less than two degrees Celsius above pre-industrial times. We'll have to reduce global carbon emissions by 7% each year until 2030 to meet that goal. Now, there's some actions that you can take to meet this goal because I know that when I hear about these, I just get overwhelmed. I'm like, well, okay, well, the government will take care of it. But you can take care of a lot of this. Uh, number one, we're always talking about on this show. Drive green, go electric, ride a bike more often, or an e-bike or an e-scooter. And if you can't afford to buy an EV, maybe you can nudge your friends and your family to. Number two, composting. It's actually really easy to do. So instead of your food scraps being driven by a big stinky garbage truck to a landfill, uh, which will then just be turned into greenhouse gases uh, or burned in an incinerator, composting turns it back into nutrient-rich soil. Number three, add some more plants to your diet. That makes a big difference. You don't have to go completely vegan. Have one or two days during the week where you eat more plants and less meat. And number four is go solar. And if you want to go solar, but you're kind of confused on how to do it, talk to our friends at EnergyPal. They are the solar and battery experts that help homeowners go solar for less. You can find a link to their website down below and they will answer all of your questions and you don't even have to pay them. That's right. But do tell them that Zach and Jesse sent you. All right, it's time for Into the Future. Escape into the future. So Chelmsford Garden Village, a housing development being built near London, is building in a plan for the near future. Spatial planning manager Jeremy Potter says it will be future proof. Um, what are they doing? Solar on the roof, uh, chargers in the driveway. According to Potter, once autonomous cars are here, they will remove each home's driveway and the cars will be kept in a lot at the edge of the village. If you've only got a certain amount of space, you want to maximize it for things that are really useful. A car is only useful for a person when they're using it. The rest of the time, it's just taking up space on the road or drive, which could be reimagined for trees, play space. Hmm. So isn't that cool? They're already thinking ahead. But they're going to put in the driveways and then they're going to remove them when the autonomous cars come. But they're planning for that, which is really cool. Okay. But I mean, it's not like they're roll up driveways or something like that. It's, I know. No. I mean, there's still, I mean, it's easier than you think to take up a driveway, though. That's true. It's just, you know, a backhoe. <laughs> boop, done. Yeah, that's a good point. All right. It's time for sunspots. So right here from the press release, I don't even have to do any work. Okay, I'm just going to read from the press release. Swell Energy Incorporated today announced that the Hawaiian Public Utilities Commission has approved its $25 million contract with Hawaiian Electric for the delivery of various grid services through an aggregated virtual power plant. VPP. We talk about that a lot on this show. Uh, it's going to happen on three islands. Swell Energy, a California-based energy and smart grid solutions provider, will deploy behind-the-meter solar-powered home batteries to approximately 6,000 residential customers to create a comprehensive VPP on Oahu, Maui, and the Hawaiian Islands. Wow. Wow. That's that's fantastic. So they're using power walls. Yep. And so people are going to basically own the power walls, which mm -hmm. is nice because if there's a power outage... You have some backup power. But those power walls will be controlled by this utility, which can turn them on and off and use the power when they need to. This Hawaiian VPP will join Swell's Orange County, Santa Barbara, and Redwood Coast VPPs, and it will become the largest VPP to date. And the thing that I really love here is that they're doing it on an island because islands are places where usually you don't have the resources to power the island itself. No, you have to bring in ships full of diesel to the Hawaiian Islands. Just yeah. to power, just to just turn to power the lights it. on. I know. So, and uh, where, are, it's a, it'd be great if they were like bathed in sun. And they, and they are. are. So yeah, a, a bit of solar, some VVPs, and maybe you can shut down some of these diesel burning uh power stations. Yeah. I mean, I think VPP is one of those terms that you probably now are like, never heard of it before, but this decade, you're going to hear it a lot. All right. It's time for the video contributor stories. What do we got this week, Jess? We've got Joe Keem in his Model 3 camper. Hey there, Zach and Jesse. This is Joachim from Ping Shop in Sweden. Just wanted to share a little bit about my uh, camper mode configuration of my Tesla Model 3 long range. For privacy, I also invested in these um, 
heat shields that I bought from Evanex. What I got is the the, the dream case uh, bed or foldable bed that you can have. Uh, I camped in Norway last summer uh, up on the mountains and it was three degrees in the summer outside and uh, since the, the AC or the climate uh, thingy doesn't really heat up the end of the trunk down there where my feet are, it's really nice to have the blanket there. This is a really really nice setup I think and it uh, it it makes this uh, super bad cold thingy uh, not so cumbersome in the summers in Sweden at least. It's also awesome to have a phone to remote control Spotify if you listen to audiobooks or music, uh, lock the car, yeah. It's quite convenient to call this Tesla Model 3, I'm mighty impressed. Uh, so now you know. That looked cozy, yeah. I mean, I have a dream case, I've used it a bunch of times and uh, it sure beats sitting out in a tent. <laughs> All right, it's time for our Patreon bonus stories. If you'd like to help support the show, head on over to Patreon for as little as a buck a month. You can see all of our Patreon bonus stories. It's a Patreon bonus stories. All right, we're back from the Patreon bonus stories. It's time for our shout outs. Who do we got this week, Jess? We have Wendell Beverly, Danny Hendricks, Timmy Evans, GTG TV, David Kowathi, Andrew Teiche, Gregory Luno, Carl Melville, Travis Hill, Dallas Thomason, Eugene Jackson IV, Arvanis Verdicia, EpicInnovations.com, Bogdan Deaconu, Ronald L. Krishner, Ariel Alexandre Brassard, Tom Vander Erend, and Kevin DiCarlo. Thank you so much for supporting us. We can't do this show without you. All right, it's time for Elon's Tweets of the Week. And Elon said, with our giant casting machines, we are literally trying to make full-size cars in the same way that toy cars are made. And he literally means like a die-cast car. That you, that you can drive. Yeah. Mayor Francis Suarez says, Elon, couldn't agree more. Would love to have you in the city of Miami City Hall to discuss it and potential solutions for the benefit of our future. Elon said, cars and trucks stuck in traffic generate megatons of toxic gases and particulate. But boring company road tunnels under Miami would solve traffic and be an example to the world. Spoke with Ron DeSantis about tunnels last week. If governor and mayor want this done, we will do it. Boring Miami. Miami's so boring. This could be a big ad campaign across the world. It'd be like, Miami's boring. New York is boring. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's awesome. <laughs> Falcon 9 launches Starlink to orbit, the eighth launch and landing of this booster. And that's a record, folks. Whoa. And then Tesla Tino says, quick shout out to the Tesla early access team and autopilot AI engineers for all the incredible hard work and responsiveness to beta testers. What an amazing group of people, Elon. You must be so proud. Elon said, absolutely, they rock. And Elon's world said, the year is 2050. X Industries is now the parent company of SpaceX, Tesla, Boring Company, Neuralink, and it's worth $10 trillion. Meanwhile, Elon is the CEO working via Starlink in Mars. Elon said, that would probably mean civilization is doing great, although it depends on assumptions for inflation. Haha. <laughs> and then K Beta 10 said, every starship in Elon's eyes. Elon said, pretty much. That is some good Photoshop right there. And then Elon said, we're switching to a more sensible full self-driving version numbering to distinguish between major and minor updates. Current build is FSD 8.1. It drove me to an unfamiliar location in LA and back last night with no interventions. Now, I think he might be waffling a little bit here because he was saying before when we thought this was version 10, that at version 10 or 11, we would all get it. So I think he's basically moving the time scale back a little bit to say, no, 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 we're not on 10, we're on eight. Interesting. And Programming Wisdom said the first step of any project is to grossly underestimate its complexity and difficulty. That is a quote from Nickel Hunt. <laughs> Elon said 100. Uh, that's a great quote. Yeah, because why else would you start anything? If you're like, oh, that's going to be super hard, forget it. Let's make that a shirt. Yeah. All right, so we have a new Patreon poll this week. Yes. Uh, who is excited to see Galley join the Arkimoto board? Pretty much everyone <laughs> agreed. It's time for Community Mail Time. Uh, speaking of mail time, you know what we just got in the mail? What did we get? It says Starman. Starman on the it. The Adventures of Starman. All right, so what Ooh. do we... Ooh. Look at this patch. Ooh. Oh, this I, I want well the patch. Can I have the patch? Nope. My bad. Uh, check this out. Oh, oh, oh. Starman Operation Darkstone Part 2. And I got the coloring book. 
It comes with a coloring book? Yeah, it does. That's awesome. Look at that. Oh, man. Now, I'm not a comic book aficionado or anything, but like the the this level amazing. of detail on this stuff, like, because I know that like so there were some comics where it was just like, they just. No, this is beautiful. This is beautiful Like stuff. each page is uh, just, you want to frame it. Comes with a little thing. I think we update our uh, behind Jesse's head picture yeah. there. And uh, we got to add to our collection. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Look at us. We're collectors. Wow. Yeah. Anyway, head on over to the Adventures of Starman. We'll put the link down below because uh, I don't know if they're sold out yet or not, but they probably will be soon. These are just beautiful. Yeah. Thank you to Eli and Frost and the whole team at uh, the Adventures of Starman. This is cool stuff. And we've got Joachim's cat, Spot. But look, you know, he's he's sleeping. He's not paying attention. We need to do something more uh, more cat friendly. Oh. <laughs> and Fred uh, showed us that V to G is here. As a wine. Oh, that's cool. That is fun. Our buddy Arnas picked up some superchargers in Lothrop, California, and he drove them to San Luis Obispo. What? What? Yeah. So uh, next time, can you just stop by our house and drop a few off? <laughs> and we have some really nice pictures of Adam's dog, Tessa. Wait, are those Martian wheels? Yeah, those look really those look good. Really. Yeah. If you're looking for some new wheels for your car, go to Martian wheels. They are Awesome. Like, we've used them on the race car. This was sent to us by Donald uh, Schwarzenegger. And this is a leaked photo of the new Aptera camping mode. Ooh. Isn't that cool? Is it long enough? I don't have a good sense of scale because I've what, never... To, to lay down? Yeah. I don't know how big it is. Like, I can't picture it because it looks so different. Just mm. like when I saw the Cybertruck, it was a good thing I was there because I uh, sense of scale is, like, really hard to picture. I feel like you'd put your head down the end and your feet would go towards the front. And yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that I sense. need to find out because that would be cool. It looks like you're on a different planet. Uh, Colleen sent us this letter. She said, our family are proud Patreon supporters of your channel and wanted to share a fun Q4 Tesla story. Before Christmas, we stopped in our local Tesla showroom in Schaumburg, Illinois, during our weekly get out of the house drive in our 2019 Model 3. The kind salespeople who know us well gifted our 10 year old daughter, Tegan, her very own red Model 3 die cast. Since my husband, Alan, didn't get his own toy, he was sad. They asked him if he'd like to volunteer to help deliver cars the last week of the year. On December 27th, he reported for duty and along with other volunteers, helped the sales and service staff give walkthroughs for customers picking up their new cars that day and set up new test drives. Altogether, they delivered 36 Teslas, the most ever done in one day at that location. It was so busy, he didn't have time to get a video. Thanks so much for everything you do. Your investor club has been awesome to be part of, and we've made some great investments. I only wish there were more women involved. We'll have to work on that. Yes, we have to work on that. We need more women involved. And by the way, that's the very same Alan that told uh, Mark Fraunmeier about Zeta. Wow, he's been busy. Busy guy. All right, it's time for Supercharger Reviews, and these are sponsored by our friends at EvanX, the Tesla community's accessory store. If you're looking for awesome accessories for your Tesla, then check out EvanX and use our discount code now you know to save you $10 on purchases over 100 Hi, Zach and Jesse. This is Janice, and I'm in Medicine Hat, Alberta, Canada, at the Six Stall Superchargers. Uh, this is right off of the Trans-Canada Highway. It's a really good location. It has a lot of amenities for food and shopping whatever you need to do. So I give this a nine out of 10. Now you know, thank you. Uh, I'm gonna do a supercharger super review here and we're behind a Hilton. See the Hilton Hotel behind here with seven stalls, uh, easy access, and it has um, 150 kilowatt. So we're gonna charge up before we head back up to Niagara Falls. And we just saw somebody from New York and somebody from, um, I think it was from North Carolina. And they just left. And you can go into the Hilton and they do have a Starbucks in there, but it's not, I don't think it's open right now because of COVID, but they have restrooms. So you can stop in there if you need to, but it's very nice. It is very cold out here. So thank you. I'll see you guys later. G'day, Zach and Jesse and the Now You Know crew and to all the viewers out there. Welcome to the Billabong Homestead Hotel Motel in Western Australia. It's a fairly remote truck stop being 650 kilometers north of Perth. About an eight hours drive. There is one other truck stop next to the Billabong Roadhouse. Both have great accommodation with en suites. Both have great food and great drinks. But this one in particular has a little surprise at the back a Tesla destination charger with enough room for both pull-in and reverse parking. 
it's got a type 2 EV charge plug in theory it should give you 22 kilowatts of charge rate or 120 kilometers per hour of charge overall I give it an 8 out of 10 keep up the great work guys I look forward to your next video with great excitement Awesome reviews, and don't forget to upload yours at our website, which is down in the show notes below, uh, so that we can get you on the air. All right, what do we got for new superchargers this week? Well, we've got a fair number. We have the 8-stall version 3 in Bancroft, Ontario. The 16-stall version 3 in Concord, Diamond Boulevard in California. 6-stall version 3 at Yilan, News Hong Road, Taiwan. The 6-stall version 3 in Taipei at Nangang Exhibition Hall in Taiwan. And the 16 stall version 3 in Davis, California. Number 2112 in the world, number 109 in Canada, is the 8 stall 250 kilowatt in Collingwood, Ontario. All right, you made it to the end of the show. It's time for our Patreon giveaway. What's our poster this week? It oh. is. Test the parking on. Nice. All right, who's our winner? To get into this big basket of fun, by the way, join us on Patreon for as little as a buck a month, and we'll get your name in there. And the winner is Detroit 2. Detroit 2. Congratulations. The sequel to Detroit. And a big shout out to all the people you're seeing here that are scrolling by. These are our Patreon patrons who give $5 or more a month. That gets you on the shout outs and it gets you on the end credits. So if you'd like to join us there and if you're waiting for your shout out, don't worry. We're getting to you. We just want to make it special so we don't do like a million shout outs a day. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we're, we're getting to you. I think we're up to like mid-October. So and Yeah. If you like this show, be sure to hit the like button if you didn't do that already. Also, subscribe to this channel if you want to see more of, of this sort of stuff. It really helps us out, so hit the subscribe button. It doesn't cost you anything. Or maybe you got to the end of the show after having hit the like button earlier, and you're like, I didn't really like it, so you can unlike it right now. There you go. And also, why don't you just let everyone know that you made it to the end of the show. So write down in the comments below that you made it to the end of the show. Talk about your favorite news story this week. We will see you next week. Now you know.